Hi guys. Hi there. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm a little distracted. <laughs> There's another person in the waiting room, Carol. Uh, Gary's going to join us and Carrie, but not Mike. And uh, not sure about Amy. Do we have a uh, quorum? Looks like it. We do. Yes, the four of the us, four right? Of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. <sighs> I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another kind of smuggy day today. I just, I just got off the trail at Autobahn. I, I'm a volunteer naturalist. Oh. I had to go so quickly from where I was on the trail to get to the parking lot to get to here, and it's like, <laughs> thank you for making it. Good to see you. And I have a meet. This Tuesday's quiz. I have a twelve o'clock Zoom meeting. Um, so I have to just transition fairly quickly, but sure. Okay. Not abruptly. We'll get started, you know, maybe a couple of minutes after 11, just to move things along. There's, um, is Nancy coming? I'm not sure. I okay. hope so. Well, I'll take, I can start taking notes if necessary. 
And we have a Jeffrey Caton. Caton. I think that's that's Gary. <laughs> <laughs> it is oh, Gary. Gary. I've learned just, the name of your alter hi ego. <laughs> hi guys. Good to see everybody again. Nice you to too. see you too. Okay. So it's eleven o'clock. I guess we could, well, we could wait another minute and then we'll we'll launch. Okay. By the way, Lydia, I went to the town website to uh, click on the link and it didn't work. Hmm, that's uh, weird. So whatever they had, it looked it, it the link was a little different. Um, it should always be the same one. Like I know the one that was in the agenda. I know. So I think uh, it got posted as something. Huh. Okay. Incorrect, which is hopefully not a problem since. Maybe, um, would you want to text Nancy or see if. Yeah. Nancy. Oh, there's Nancy. See. It's fine. She's here, Christine. Oh, okay. So, okay, let's get started since um, Jai has to go early and we have lots, lots to talk about. Welcome, everybody. Um, introductions we have. The Recyc Well Fleet Recycling Committee members, Christine, Lydia, Jaya, and Jane. Jane is connecting to audio, I see. Um, Can you hear us, Jane? There's Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Christine. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Jaya. welcome. Gary and Carol and Jane. And uh, here we go. There's Chris. So looks like Jane is, maybe Jane, if you um, sign out and then sign back in, that might help with the audio. Or Christine, I don't know if you want to call Jane or text her or something. Um, but yeah. we, can, we can get started and um, I'll just, there's Carol Magana from the Wellfleet Energy and Climate Action Committee and Gary Senecal from the East Ham Recycling Committee. All right, so um, announcements, I guess, one, and there's Chris, hey, Chris. Uh, one thing that we're missing is Beth. Beth, Bethia Bramers, um, her term ended on June 30th, oh, so we, right. we will miss her. Yeah. And we'll mm -hmm. write her a nice note and find a way to thank her for all her years of uh, service on the recycling committee. Um, the, any other announcements from anybody? There's one neat thing. I was at uh, Winslow's over the weekend and you might know about the Wellfleet uh, shell recycling program. There's I think eight participating restaurants and they're picking up three days a week, taking it to the transfer station to sit for a year and then they're gonna be putting it back in the, on the flats as uh, for oyster reef propagation for cults. That's awesome. Who's collecting it, Lydia? It's, um, if you go to, it's a shellfish organization, kind of a, a collaborative effort, and mm -hmm. I can send you the link. Oh, there's Carrie. So she's joining us. Um, so they're picking up from restaurants? That's mm -hmm. Eight different restaurants, they list the restaurants. Uh, I might have it on my desktop, let me see. Yeah, if you go to massoyster.org, I can um, massoyster.org, okay. shell recycling. And the restaurants okay. that are doing it are Beachcomber, Pearl, Max Seafood Shack, Winslow's Tavern, Wicked Oyster, Moby Dick, Seashore, Wellfleet Shell Fisherman's Farmer's Market, and Van Rensselaer's. Oh, that's great. Yeah, awesome. it's a really nice website too. So I recommend having a look at that. I, I have I have something. Um, this weekend I went to an art opening at the AM, I think it's pronounced AM Zender Gallery on Bank Street. And I was really impressed that they had glass glasses for their little glasses of wine. Wow. And, and I'm wondering, is there some way that we can, I took one picture and I'm thinking maybe I can just post a picture to Instagram saying that it's, um, you know, gallery season and how nice, you know, to have glass glasses. And I, I, I don't know if I can use the name of the gallery, but um, you know, just uh, it, it's something that's always bothered me at openings and it was so nice to have. And they were little tiny glasses. They're very sweet and nice. Nice. That's, that's, that's good to me. Very good news. Yeah. yeah. So, so can I use yeah. the name of the gallery or should I just kind of do it generic? 
Did you ask them? Um, I was thinking too, just them. that since we're a town committee, if I'm posting it, you know, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to do that. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would imagine, okay. I I would imagine okay, with huh? their permission, you know, I don't think. Yeah, um, you could ask Anne, Anne Marie. Yeah. yeah. Just send her. Uh, that might be good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I did know, Carrie, I about, well, I guess it depends on the town. So. Yeah. Okay. I did talk to her. I didn't tell her that I was on the recycling committee, but I did mm -hmm. talk to her and just tell her how wonderful it was. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I'd be happy to stop in again and, and talk to her. All right. Super. Yeah. Um, so let's, we'll start with uh, number one on the agenda, swap shop reopening mid-July. I think that their sign-up sheet is up and running. Hey, there's Jane. Mm -hmm. um, I am, I, am I on audio? Yes. You are. I hear you. It took me forever to get it's in. Okay. I don't it's great to see you and hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, swap shop reopening. I think the first day is July 10th. That's what I, I believe I saw on the sign-up sheet. And just like before, it's eight to 10 and 10 to 12. Those are the two shifts. And I think you can sign up for shifts if you're interested. Um, mm -hmm. well, that's great. I'm sure it's going to be, I think some of the ships are already full the last time I looked, mm -hmm. but people are raring to go. And I'm sure they've got tons of stuff to bring over there. Mm. Um, Did uh, Ronald say anything, Roland say anything about whether they were going to have like a, a day when they accept stuff? Or they're just going to do it. It didn't look like it. It looked like it's okay. more or less like it was before. Yeah. Um, I invited it. Nice if the, it seems like if they do that, then they can take a little more time and care with evaluating so they don't get so much stuff in the dumpster. Yeah. I saw a big roll off in front of it, and Mike said they were cleaning it out, so they must have emptied it <laughs> the contents. Of, there were barn swallows in there. It's my favorite bird, but. <laughs> <laughs> But not there. <laughs> yeah, not so, not so much inside. <laughs> yeah, and and I don't I don't think Roland responded to all of us when I sent out that email asking if he wanted an announcement, and he said no. He was afraid that too yeah. much. Yeah, too talk. much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe a slow open or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but, but that's exciting for for everyone involved. I think. Mm -hmm. happy with that. That we're going to be on board, and so far it looks like it. So what's that, Joy? Sorry. It, he thought that enough people would be uh, volunteering, and so far it looks like it. Because I went in and looked to see where I could fit, and where I could fit, there were people. It was all yeah. filled. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Gary, is the swap shop in East Ham open? Ning? It is. It's been open for a couple of weeks, and uh, oh, I'm nice. sure you're going to experience the same thing. <laughs> people have been saving up uh, boxes of things that they want to take to the swap shop for a year and a half. And we're inundated with stuff. I mean, we just can't handle the amount of stuff that's coming. Oh, wow. That's the biggest problem right now. Yeah, they might need some extra volunteers. So maybe um, offer your help to Roland, email them or something. Yeah. I should remind people that the, the Indy had, a, had an article on the East Ham swap shop mm -hmm. last week, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. Mm. Good news is that it's not going into solid waste. They saved it all. Yes. They're bringing it all yes. to the swap shop now. <laughs> it didn't go into solid waste. Um, good. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, the only updates from Mike. Mike was Mike Sicalia, the transfer station foreman. Sorry he couldn't be here today, but um, he said Tuesdays are really busy for him, and this is the first day back after the holiday weekend. Mm. So he said that. Yeah. The the only thing was that the swap shop was going to be reopening soon and that um, the they got their wish from town meeting uh, for the equipment that they needed. So that's good. Yeah. Um, Mass DEP, Cape Cod Commission, Barnstable County Extension. We have Carrie here who's muted, but Carrie, maybe you want to give us um, some, what's the latest? Where's Carrie? Sorry, what was that, Lydia? I was responding to an email. Sure. Um, we just have on the agenda Mass DEP Cape Cod Commission Barnesville County Extension. Do you have some updates oh. on grants and those kind of things? Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I saw that. Um, thank you for allowing me to be number one. Um, I double booked myself um, for this hour. So um, I prioritize this rather than the other call, um, even though it has to do with composting, which is pretty important right now. 
Um, so I just got off a call at um, a little bit before 11 with the Cape Cod Commission and Geocentec, which is one of our vendors uh, working with us for the feasibility study. Um, so we were wrapping up task four. So we're starting to see some real coalescence of not only the information that they've been gathering through comments of the municipalities, through comments from um, the recycling committees and, and holding those public forums, um, but also just information that we've provided uh, based on, you know, sort of what the Commonwealth has available, what I have available, what we have in retrack based on surveys that um, the towns uh, do every single year to be able to get to the grant um, applications, et cetera. So um, that will be going out after we, after Patty, Michelle and I of the commission um, and the extension put in our comments, uh, we will be sending out task four for review, uh, meaning comments from you and, and the transfer stations, DPWs, et cetera. So we'll be getting that done. Um, so that's moving along quite well. Um, the great news is it's starting to look like none of this is impossible. So um, when we're looking at the cost benefit, it's, it's a good thing that we're starting to see it come together in a way that, you know, is, is looking really bright um, as far as, you know, the Cape and Islands future for cycling and solid waste and diversion programs, et cetera, and saving households money. Um, the grants, um, as you know, uh, or may or may not know, um, uh, have been extended because they opened up late. So they're actually going through July 14th this year. Um, I have been in touch with Jean, Mike and Jay over at the uh, DPW and transfer station um, they plan on getting their grants uh, turned in sometime this week, but they're old pros at it, so I'm not too, too worried. Um, I, I am leaving for vacation um, Friday, uh, returning the 26th, but through the 14th, I'm definitely prioritizing the grants. So even though I've sort of begged municipalities to get a hold of me uh, today and especially tomorrow, since I'm kind of wide open for grant questions or help and assistance, um, not a whole lot of booked appointments with me. So, um, but again, Mike has been doing this. He knows how to do this. Um, he just might have some questions regarding the pay as you throw the swap shop, because those things are kind of, um, conundrums with the COVID crisis. So there's some exceptions to the rules. So that's why it's really important, uh, that we, um, uh, you know, have some communication before they submit the grants permanently and definitely before the deadlines when they can't change their information. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, every year for the last five years, Wellfleet and Brewster have been like the battle between the top um, as far as best management practices under RDP. Um, so I believe both towns get the same per point. Uh, but there's always been this kind of like back and forth between Brewster and Wellfleet and then Chatham always kind of comes in second or third. So um, uh, keep it up, <laughs> I guess I should say. And then um, I'm trying to think, uh, the boat shrink wrap should have wrapped up. So I think we're gonna have a wrap up call with Stephanie and Mike and all the other host communities. August 7th at the uh, Dennis hazardous waste collection we're doing the latex paint again like the big pop-up event so um mike is very aware of that he brings the gaylords of uh paint shed paint uh that's non-hazardous to that event um he works all that stuff out with chad um who's the foreman over in dennis um so boat shrink wrap was amazing i mean Bourne had six tons alone um and then east ham uh, had a container as well as the town of dennis so we haven't had those weigh-ins yet. And then Chatham was kind of a hub collection and so was Wellfleet. So um, we're gonna have a lot of shrink wrap. Um, the latex paint is coming up. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Huh? I have a couple of questions. Okay, great. So for the, the boat shrink wrap, can that be reused? Can that be like rolled up again and then reused? So if, if boat shrink wrap is applied appropriately and cut appropriately at the belly of the boat, you can use it for up to three years with the shrink wrap. Um, I know a lot of people who after they don't use it or they just dispose of it after the first year or the second year or something, a lot of them, if they have like fireplaces and stuff, use them as like wood cover in the winter to cover up their wood piles. 
Um, you can, I mean, you can use it as a tarp in the back of your bed if you want to roll it up and store it in your garage or cover something up. So there are ways to reuse it. Um, mm -hmm. But as boat shrink wrap, it's up to three years after that, the quality with the shrinking, the heat, um, the application and stuff just stops working. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and it gets smaller and smaller as you're cutting it every year. So then eventually it just won't fit the same size boat. Mm -hmm. um, there are alternatives with canvas tarps and things like that. Obviously, if you have a covered shed or shop or a bay, you can cover it that way. Um, some people just leave their boats out in the open, which is obviously not a good thing to do. <laughs> um, so yes, shrink wrap can be used as is for up to three years if properly applied okay. and removed Thanks. every year. And the other question is about the micro grant, which um, I, is that a kind of rolling deadline? I didn't see any date listed. Well, when we asked her and she got back to us, she said there isn't. So it's kind of a rolling thing, okay. but then they'll shut it down and then they'll reopen it. But okay. really there's no date, which is, I think kind of, I think an end date or a deadline is necessary because if people are thinking of applying for it, I think they need to know when they're just gonna suddenly kind of close it out because say there's a group working on it um, and it takes a little while to get written or whatever mm -hmm. or to be planned out, then all of a sudden you're, you know, it's like, oh, never mind, we're closed now. It's like, uh, and then you have to wait for it to open again. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest issue with Wellfleet last time um, that Aaron didn't catch and that I didn't catch, but I remember having the conversation with Tom is that it came from the municipality and not some sort of public pri private type partnership with the municipality mm -hmm. so Aaron turned it down but otherwise it's it seemed like what was written the last time uh so hopefully I don't know if anybody turned that in yet but um not yet I think yeah, um, there, there was no deadline given to us we were waiting to talk with the uh, center for coastal studies because Laura, Laura was interested okay and so so yeah, I mean, just for the sake of not having a deadline and the fact that it's been open for a little while I would go ahead and try to get that in as soon as possible. Okay. Um, but I think that was the biggest issue last year, which yeah, or not was, last year, but last attempt was it came from the municipality rather than with a private public, you know, nonprofit for profit type um, partnership. Yeah, thanks, Carrie. Does anyone have any other questions for Carrie? Yeah, I just, Carrie wanted to ask about uh, the request from Phil to support their expansion request to- Yeah, that's on the agenda it. here. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, well. I have it. I mean, we have it farther down, but we can do it right now. It's number six. Yeah, I was just wondering um, what, I mean, I guess MassDEP has already approved it or does it go through the commission first? Um, you know, I don't know the the, permitting process or like the legalities behind it. Um, they are in phase six. I know they continue to um, look at other types of expansion. Um, there's some conservation land uh, issues with some turtles, I believe in the area. Um, so I'm not sure. And that would be more of an expansion issue and not so much of a leachate issue with, with the, the conservation because uh, they flare off that methane. Um, which I wish they captured it because it can be used for energy, uh, mm -hmm. but they don't, it's flared off. Um, I don't make any sort of recommendations in t to that fact, just as a public employee. Uh, the iSWIM is a, I think it's a privately publicly funded uh, operation. Um, I will say that Bourne will probably outside of Nantucket be the only landfill in the next, I'd say five years. Uh, here it's, uh, you know, it's an archaic way of disposing of trash. However, we have a moratorium on waste to energy facilities and we, um, meaning that we can't build new waste energy facilities because we have the moratorium on burning trash or incinerating it. Um, and that's due to issues about air quality um, with the residues that are released. And then the, um, the other alternative, which is part of the feasibility study that Jack Units under a former, a former county administrator had approached me about nearly two years ago that manifested into this feasibility study uh, is that we, unless we come up with, which our solid waste master plan for 2020 to 2030 through the DEP uh, looks at waste reduction more than diversion. Um, but I, you can't tell people to stop consuming. I mean, you just can't. 
So even with these waste reduction goals, um, they are, you know, they're well planned and thought out, but they're hard to achieve. So you're looking at transportation costs of disposing of tr our trash out of state. So you're making our trash just another state's problem um, that either have different regulations around landfilling or waste energy, um, or um, there's just larger land capacity. So the issue with landfills is that there isn't any issues with DEP allowing for expansions or new facilities. It's that nobody is asking to expand them besides Bourne. And the current landfills we have are at capacity. So that's why they're closing. It's because they're not asking to re-permit them or to expand them to add capacity for the region that already uses that facility. Mm -hmm. Um, and then again, with the moratoriums, we're not allowed to have one. So are not, we're not allowed to rebuild anymore. So they're at capacity as far as what they're already doing for their region or the trash that they're already accepting. Okay. Um, so the, I, the IS... Um, the I swim, IS I swim. Uh, WM. You said that's a private uh, public partnership with Bourne? I believe it is with the town of Bourne. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't because there must be some type of operations for the landfill that fall outside of municipal right. employees. Okay. So that, mm -hmm. that's why I believe it's public private. Okay. Um, okay. But- I'm concerned about the landfill, you know, the, the uh, letter that they'd like us to write in support of expanding the landfill. Um, they haven't first addressed organics recycling at all or any other zero waste initiatives. Food waste makes up at least 25% of what most of us throw away in the trash that's from the Mass DEP in 2016. And it's about 40% um, in the US uh, food is wasted. That's what the Natural Resources Defense Council says. So though I think it's, um, you know, the landfill, they also accept all kinds of ash from the CMAS waste to energy incinerator. Mm -hmm. That is trucked daily, I think hourly practically, mm -hmm. to, um, to Bourne. And we visited there. I don't know if there was mm -hmm. anybody on the commission, on the committee that went and, and right here, but I think it was Beth and Lonnie myself years ago. Um, I would urge you to look at the Conservation Law Foundation's um, presentation. I put it in the chat and it's uh, probably, well, it's extensive. Mm -hmm. And okay. they, um, they too are talking about zero waste initiatives rather than expanding mm -hmm. landfills. Okay. So um, right. I um, think there's so much left to do before you know, 25% of the food waste where mm -hmm. there's been talk for years about an anaerobic digester or it's just not happening on a coordinated mm -hmm. level. Most of the towns on the Cape don't even have the residential food waste drop off. So I feel like it's premature to, to talk about digging up more, um, you know, more land in Bourne. Mm -hmm. Right. So there are eight towns that collect food waste at transfer stations. They are collected and trucked off Cape with the exception of Watts Family Farm does operate out of Forestdale and Sandwich. And then they also have a location off Cape. Uh, Black Earth is the other, um, you know, composter for the transfer stations and some of the businesses. Uh, they're starting to make their mark down here. Uh, so they're kind of in operations down here as far as food waste goes. Born did attempt an anaerobic digester years ago. Um, they got all the way to the point to where harvest power backed out because of the cost of the energy credits. It was cost prohibitive at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So Born, in their defense had made a valiant effort on diverting food waste via um, a digester an on-site anaerobic digester, but it fell apart. Um, Yarmouth has been working on it for a long time. 
there was some discussion about ending um, the attempt in Yarmouth as well, because it's been in the works since 2017 and they still haven't, you know, they're just spending money on these attempts of contrast, contracting, sort of fighting oh, outside like Conservation Law Foundation about their opinions on mixing sludge with food waste versus having two different, yeah. you know, which does indeed produce two different outsource, you know, materials. So sludge is obviously something that you know, once run through a digester is not something, you know, you want to put on your garden, right? Where food yeah. waste produces a really nice, um, you know, fertilizer, that sort of thing. So there are differences in how digesters can manage uh, feedstock, which would be the wastewater treatment sludge and then food waste from commercial entities, perhaps even residential entities. So there is a lot going around. Um, so again, I don't pose an opinion on the expansion of the landfill, but those are sort of just some like small little tidbits around um, attempts, but born again in their defense. And I can see why Conservation Law Foundation is saying, you know, zero waste initiatives, not expansion, um, is born did attempt before the town of Yarmouth. And they got quite a ways before um, it, the, pro the the project ended because of the backing out of the yeah. of harvest power. Okay. So that was well, thanks for that. that was a wild pack, so I think it's probably time to try again. I just don't think we can can let this opportunity go, especially yeah. with possibly infrastructure money coming from the federal government. Yeah. And yeah, sorry it's just to, a low hanging fruit, you know, I'm uh, the twenty five percent of the trash, it's a quarter. Right. And it's also very heavy. Um, it's the heavy weight of the trash. It's the stinky part of our trash. It's the methane of our trash as it sort of disintegrates and gets piled up as it's, you know, degrading in something like a landfill. Waste to energy facilities don't necessarily like it because it takes more energy to burn something that's wet. Um, and so it's, that's exactly what it is. It's a low hanging fruit, but because of the complications or sort of the NIMBY or the fears of food waste and managing food waste around vector, vermin, um, animals, you know, um, the smell factor, um, how to implement it where neighbors are not worried about that particular sort of issue. Uh, we have a rat problem on the Cape. Um, so there's a lot of nuances to what's preventing people for Mm -hmm. from taking it yet it's a, it's a low-hanging fruit and cost wise it's really really comparable to disposal however environmentally the you know cost to the environment is astronomical compared to disposal or waste to energy um disposal of food waste yeah thank you carrie I know that with um, Black Earth Compost, they very successfully have compost pickup in residential neighborhoods in Newton, for instance. And there's no, uh, as far as, there's no complaints about rats or, because it's all contained. It's like a small roll, rolling cart. Um, similar right, to- Right, Provincetown was, was gonna do food waste collection at their transfer station. And the consensus was, is we have too many rats here none of the transfer stations and I have examples of right out in the open like Wellfleet where it's just there and then a bungee cord goes on it at the end of the day it's near a water source so when the food waste goes into the truck and sent to Dennis you can just wash out the barrel real quick mm -hmm. um, a simple solution to um, the smell issue is having a container of either cat cat litter or um, sawdust near yeah, it so that. once somebody you know somebody puts their food waste in there, you just sprinkle a little bit of the sawdust right on top. Um, yeah, it's so, not that bad. I mean, it's it's food, it's not, the smell is, is icky, but it's momentary, you know, it's not. Yeah, like, no, I, I'm an avid, avid, avid um, believer in the simplicity of food waste composting outside of large commercial which definitely has to be well operated and maintained. 
Mm -hmm. um, in Delaware, uh, in Wilmington, Delaware, there was a huge issue with their food waste composting facility. If you want to look that up, um, the cleanup was, you know, expensive and the smell was a huge issue, but it was not being properly managed. Yeah. So I think you know, Nantucket has an anaerobic digester and they've had it for, for decades. Right. So it's it was more it's of an open cool. facility. So I think yeah. the yeah, open facilities, I can see those being a real issue because it's out in the open and unless it's really hot, it doesn't break down enough. Yeah, and, I mean, I've been in Dennis where it's like the breeze hit and I was like, oop, there's the food waste. But again, it's nothing, you know, but it is smaller quantities than, you know, like a commercial ban or a commercial facility. Yeah. Um, but I absolutely agree, not only cost, but just the low hanging fruit of it. Like how easy is it for us to not put our food into the trash? So I mean, for, in terms of uh, responding to the request, I think that, how do you all feel? Do you want to uh, qualify this um, response and saying, you know, if you can show progress with food waste composting and zero waste efforts, Silence. I'd kind of like to look at uh, what the Conservation Law Foundation's uh, stance is and yeah, before making any decision. Sure. Um, I sent it last week, but. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, it's okay. I, we can bring it up again, but I'd urge you to read it. I mean, if there are other people that, you know, are ready to take uh, some stand on it, that. Is there a way we can get some information about the Newton system? Print, you know, in print somewhere. Blackearthcompost.com. Okay. Okay. And uh, they are working out of, I think, Falmouth as well, using the farm that uh, Mary Ryder started in Falmouth, the Compost with Me program. I know Cam Cambridge has a very good system too. I just don't know where they connect. Their, um, their system is a little controversial because I think they're taking it to a place that mixes it with sludge. Oh, okay. And that's not, um, there's also PFAS, I guess, in the sludge apparently. So they want to, they're recommending that food waste is kept separate from sludge. Okay. All compost operations. Okay, we can bring that up at the, the next meeting. I think it's a long process. I don't think it's um, been a, the permitting process is, I think just beginning because his letter, his request came to us last month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And maybe if anybody uh, finds any information that they would share, and I'll go back and look at what you shared, Lydia. Mm -hmm. Thanks, okay. And Carrie, I don't know if you um, can stay, but if you can, great, if you have to go to your next meeting. Yeah, I think I'm okay right now. I haven't heard back from the gentleman that I double booked. So I told him that I couldn't at 11, but potentially maybe from 12 to 1230 because I have a 1230 call. Oh, wow. but, um, well, yeah, thanks so much for, for being here. With him. So yeah, I just, I told him that I had double booked when I said, how about 11 on Tuesday? So okay. I just to you here. Back to um, me. Right. I have a question for Carrie before she has to go. Sure. Uh, Carrie, what has been the uh, the uh, the problems in getting these uh, anaerob anaerobic digesters uh, some traction? Why uh, why are they so difficult to get some uh, traction on the cable? I think a lot of it has to do with feedstock. A lot of it has to do with comments about how um, they are operated in the sense of using a digester to manage wastewater treatment sludge as well as food waste and what it means to have um you know separate um end you know product um i think when you're talking about digestion it's a power source so finding contracts and 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 short-term and long-term contracts with feedstock themselves and then the power companies and then the vendors has been what I have noticed the issue during this. So Bourne had attempted prior to me starting five years ago. Um, and I believe they were working on it for five years. So 
Um, and what really happened is it was sort of like on the go and then Harvest Power backed out because of the cost of the energy. So they weren't making, Harvest Power did not see it as a viable option for them. I don't know about say like a Cape Light Compact or a what, I don't know. It was just Harvest Power. Phil, you know, I don't know. I think it's worth reviewing that letter from CLF, but it might be worth it. Uh, Christine and Lydia as the chairs to invite Phil to sort of speak about it. He's extremely knowledgeable, very lively. Um, he, you know, maybe you can hear from Bourne's perspective about the expansion phase and why he's asking for support, etc. cetera. Um, he might even be able to tell you about that um, anaerobic digestion failure in Bourne and he can talk more about what happened. Um, but with Yarmouth right now, again, they're in their fourth year from 2017. And the bigger issue is the feedstock would, I mean, they were trying to get contracts from like towns like Brockton. So they were bringing stuff in, mm. um, which do we really want people trucking in there? You know what I mean? So there's been some issues. So another person who could speak to that would be Ed Centio from Yarmouth, who's the finance director, who's been working very closely with um, Genesis Industrial on this project, or Jeff Colby, who's the, the DPW director. Um, he might also be a good person um, just to invite in for about 15 minutes to give you that backstory on what's happening, where they're at, why are they there? And sort of answering your question, Gary, about what is it that's making this so difficult to come to fruition? Um, we could invite someone from conservation lab. Sorry. That's okay. But that's my general understanding of why it failed in Bourne uh, because of the backing out. And then with Yarmouth, it seems to be more of a feedstock mm -hmm. issue um, and development of the actual operations uh, with regard to food waste and the sludge. I think it's important to hear both sides too, not just the side of the, the landfill to also hear from conservation. If you like, I can, um, uh, I know you're fairly familiar with these chairs, but I can um, do a quick introduction email, Lydia and uh, Christine, and uh, to Ed and Jeff Colby and as well as Phil. And then you guys can decide, you know, if you would like to have, you know, during your next meeting or in general, a presentation from, from them Phil more on the ice swim and the expansion. And then, like I said, you can ask him about the digester. Um, Maybe there should be a Cape wide forum on the issues because it affects all towns. Yeah. I can I... put that together. Um, I would say leading, so July is just kind of a wash, uh, mostly because the, you know, the transfer stations are so busy. Again, you saw Mike's email that said, I'd love to be there, but Tuesdays are difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I could, we could potentially look at the end of August you know, going into the fall and having a Cape sure. wide forum on, you know, the issues. Um, we're also going to be leading up to the closure of our feasibility study with Geocentech and Tetratech. And so maybe Patty Daly and Michelle White can do a short on where we're at with that. So you guys don't have to listen to me the whole time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can surely, um, I'll speak with um, Ed and Jeff and, and Phil um, and maybe set something up. Yeah, so I guess that's a great idea, Lydia, is to do sort of a, a Cape wide invitation. <laughs> Excuse me. Gesundheit. Could we invite restaurant owners to that? I'm sorry? Could we invite restaurant owners to that? You certainly could, sure. sure. But again, I think it's important to have both, both uh, points of view. Yeah. So the Bourne Landfill folks and the Conservation Law Foundation as well. Yeah, we can, um, uh, I can reach out to Kirsty. My old contact, John, uh, moved on um, from that with his grad program. I think he was focusing more full time, but I, I can reach out to Kirsty, um, who's the, the director, I believe, the executive director of the Conservation Law Foundation, mm -hmm. um, and maybe have like a, you know, a panel of you know, what the issues are. I think, however, I would like to have two separate meetings to leave out contention. Um, I don't think mm -hmm. 
I don't think it's a good idea with, especially if we're going to talk about the expansion of the ice swim. Um, well, and issues surrounding anaerobic digestion. I think Conservation Law Foundation has their set of eyes and then there's the other set of eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would be if we invited them to have to hear both sides as a presentation, I would want it to be in two separate forums. I if I was the one to put it together, I think if you if somebody else were doing it, that's fine. But if I'm going to put this together through my wide range of municipal contacts with the Cape and Islands, I'm not, I don't want to put together a contentious forum it where it can turn that. into a match real quick. Maybe Congressman Keating or Julian Sear, Sarah Peak could be involved in some way because they, they would have uh, say on, say what could be, what we could ask of the federal government if say we wanted to try and get an anaerobic digester placed or some kind of infrastructure for for food waste composting or zero waste initiatives. Right, there's some things that I really can't be part of the planning process in this. Mm -hmm. However, I can certainly, you know, guide the, the meeting itself as an invite and getting it together. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like emails to like Keating or Peak or Sear or something like that, That's I would leave we can do. Yeah. Or I could yeah. do I'm very right. happy to get to, you know, using all of my, you know, community contacts and stuff as far as the DPWs, the DPWs, the transfer stations and the recycling committee members into the same room, I'd be happy to facilitate that mm -hmm. if somebody else is willing to plan the two different forums and who would be the panelists of it. I'd recommend uh, we hold off on that and just see um, what kind of information we can find from um, it's a good idea, Lydia, to talk to maybe um, our representatives and see mm -hmm. what their views are yeah. as well. Because there's exciting things happening, you know, with um, the composting at the transfer stations and then the mass oyster collection. There's a real mm -hmm. desire to do it. All the farmers markets and the increase in population here, too, since yeah. the pandemic, there might be you know, more feedstock. We'll see. Right. But thanks, Carrie. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, I wonder if we should go to Carol now, since uh, she's our guest and she may have a, um, under 11A. Sorry to jump around, Nancy, but I think um, we'll have Carol say something about the Energy and Climate Action Committee. I'm sorry, we're meeting tonight, so I don't really have a report. Okay. And I forgot I had another commitment, uh, so I had to absent myself. That's okay. We'll catch up next time. And uh, anything new on the solar panels uh, at the capped landfill? Well, I, I saw um, Eversource there putting big poles in, so there must be yeah. something going on. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good sign. Mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, hopefully it won't be long then. One hopes. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Um, so next we have June 26, the town meeting water station review and uh, we had four great volunteers from AmeriCorps, Ashley Boudreau, Bianca Bowman, Caroline Steffens, and Nicole Westfall. And that went really well. Nancy was there. Also, we had Catherine Nass from the Water Commission, Board of Water Commissioners, and lots of help from the Wellfleet Fire Department and Police Department. This is um, one of the new kinds of water, rain it's called, mm. that we ran, we did the first order was open water and then we pretty quickly ran out around 1.15, I think it was. Oh. So Nancy went back in and got additional cases and this was what was left. You know, this is, uh, it's nice. It's just, it's flat water in a screw top bottle. Hmm. And it was super cold. The, the fire department provided huge uh, coolers with ice and uh, they also went into the audience delivering the water to people that were seated. It was, was it a pretty hot day? I was at a very town. Hot day. Oh, and it was a, quite a long meeting. It went from 10 to 4, 15, 4, 30. Oh my gosh. Yeah, wow. it was long. The, but, breezes, um, the breezes were good. Good. Yeah. The wind kept the, the weather yeah. good. Yeah. That's true. So Nancy, was, uh, was that rain brand also at the marketplace or? 
Yes, Someone. they were both from the marketplace. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Excellent. That's good. Yeah. They had accidentally sold some of the original cases that they had held for oh, us. Oh, dear. So then they had ordered these and, um, okay. and they arrived mid-morning. Excellent. And they have it in the cooler. You can buy it there now. It's about $1.50 retail mm -hmm. for each bottle. And Nancy's going to write uh, thank you notes to all, all parties. I, I mailed those. Oh, you did. That's great. Thank yeah. you, Nancy. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> You're welcome. And we have uh, the July 11th road race is coming right up. I haven't been in touch with Becky recently to see um, what's going on, but I, we recommended that she try to work with the marketplace on getting the same kind of water. But we should probably, um, now that it's because of the holiday, we didn't really get to talk to her, but now we will. So Christine, I think the way we left it, what, were we going to try and use Fusties uh, as well as open water or rainwater? Well, we ha we have the one. And then um, I believe we we did talk to uh, Madhavi and she said she would be interested in getting volunteers together. And she okay. has... I thought she said she had two Fusties, but I don't recall that. Okay. She um, also has that, um, the eight spigot water, right. water thing. I don't know how to quite describe it. It's like a stand with eight hoses on it. With a spigot yeah, so the, the only, yeah. So I guess the, the question is, you know, just about from the sanitariness, um, how we're going to dispense from those would we dispense, would people dispense and we wipe it off? I mean, how, you know, I'm wondering about that if we were to have Fusties. Mm -hmm. or, or, the, or the hose thing. Yeah. Um, well, let's see what Becky wants to do. Becky Rosenberger, okay. the recreation department. Alrighty. And maybe that she's ordered the water already. Um, uh -huh. She was at town meeting and she came by the water station. She really liked it. Uh-huh, good. Would you be willing to uh, continue communicating with her, Lydia? Sure. That'd be great. And, and, then, and, and I then. think, um, Nancy, you're- um, I'm available, you're, yeah. You're, okay, anybody else can be there? Um, I think it's- I can be there. Okay, so Christine and Nancy. Um, super. And Lydia, are you available that day? I'm available just early because I work that day. I'll have to leave okay. by 10 o'clock. Okay. So I can help with setup and things. Alrighty. Oh, that was the other thing at, at town meeting. We had um, one big bag with the recycling symbols on it to collect the cans and then we just took them to the transfer station the next day and Nancy took the cardboard cartons. So right. it was super easy. And I think the fire department was pleased because I didn't have to deal with any of that. Right. Um, do we, do we, did, did that bag with the recycling symbol, come, well, I don't, we have the, um, the stands. Yeah, uh, we just used I, the bag I, and tied it to the tent. Uh, we were okay. underneath the tent and okay. that seemed to work fine. Alrighty, and is that something that somebody still has or? I, I have the um, malt bags, but it wasn't a recycling per se bag. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the bag that I have, it's a plastic bag with the green symbols on it and it's reusable. Oh. I mean, it just emptied okay. it. Okay. It's the well, one that fits the X-frame that came, there's a box of them with the X-frames. There should be anyway. Oh, those, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so we uh, could get, so I guess we don't need the X-frames then. We'll just have a bag. And yeah, I think okay. um, on a windy day, the X-frames might might be a problem. I don't I don't know. They're, they're available and, uh, I can pick up a couple. They're, they're in the universal shed. Okay. Um, and then they have the tops that you put, you know. Um, oh, that's right. I think we volunteered them. in there. I think Leon's going to come again too, right? Your husband? Yeah, I asked him. Let me make sure. And then, and then Madhavi and um, volunteers from Sustainable Practices. Right, right. Okay. Um, next, we have summer 2021 recycling news flyer or bookmark. I did a little something on Canva, but it's um, that's a website that has kind of graphics that you can play around with, okay. but nothing that I'm ready to, to show you guys yet. 
Uh, um, Lydia, I got an invite to to view that. So would I sign yeah. into the same account that you did or create my own account on Canva? Um, I think you could use the same one. That okay. way you could all access the same. Already. I don't know, or, or you could start your own, whatever you wanna do. No, I was just wondering how I could access what you were doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, then the recycling committee annual calendar chart, I emailed that around. So that might help us when we, mm -hmm when we're doing some planning around like when grants might be coming up or community cutlery things. Uh, by the way, we got a request this morning for the water dispenser um, for someone at the library to use for a party tomorrow. Okay. And um, so, so you passed, oh, so the library's using it. I mean, yeah. so someone at the yeah. library that knows where it is and okay. Mm -hmm. right. um, then plastic reduction aquaculture. So we're going to talk with Laura Ludwig of the Center for Coastal Studies on that and see if she wants to, with Carrie's advice, to kind of jump on that as soon as possible, that micro grant. And is Tom um, generally available to talk with her if we get something together? I think so. Um, he's around. I'll see him tomorrow so I can ask him. Okay. And uh, if you want, I can follow up then about getting some kind of a meeting together sure. or Zoom or something. Okay. Um, Nipspan Mashpee. So they, they just, well, I think it's going into effect very soon. And then Falmouth, I found the Falmouth um, bylaw. The warrant article is much longer than the, the bylaw. It's basically one sentence that says, uh, we'll ban nips of 100 milliliters and under. I guess some, some towns they banned the 50, but then people started selling the, the 100, which is um, pretty small. Um, so I guess for town meeting, I don't know if there's going to be a special town meeting that would take place in the fall. I think it's unlikely, but annual town meeting would be in the spring. So there would be, you know, time to, to work on that. Um, maybe someone would like that as an assignment to get, get the, some of the, the languages of the bylaws together and um i can do that in the fall okay. <clears throat> and maybe the universal redemption bottle bill that's something i think it would be good to talk to our state legislature about mm -hmm. to see if they're studying it at all and um so maybe sarah peak and julian there i can talk to them okay um, the packaging reusable container survey, the, the Mass DP as part of the micro grant, uh, they had a sample, sample grant, um, a pilot project. You could ask food service places, restaurants, if they would consider using washable takeout containers and there's money to try a pilot. Um, I wrote to Carrie and to Aaron at the Mass DEP about that to find out if there's anybody in Massachusetts doing it. It seems like there's places in San Francisco, there's a dispatch, I think it's called. And uh, I'll send that around because it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought if we could create a survey, could ask the restaurant or food service people that, that might be open to it to see if there would just be like, no way I can't do it. Or maybe, um, you know, maybe we could, we could consider it one day. So I'll maybe just come up with a survey, some survey questions to see uh, if it's at all feasible. Could, then, could, I, um, mm -hmm. yes. could I ask a question because it's a, it's a, it's a restaurant question. Have we ever discussed um, where restaurants could have a little sign for takeout? Uh, please let us know if you do not need cutlery because so many people, the cutlery is in the bag or it's automatically put and they just throw it away. So I don't know and I don't have time to even say much more about it because I have to go. But have we ever discussed that? Has anyone ever brought that up, the idea of posing the thought to restaurants to, um, because I've seen it in other places off Cape, 
please let us know if, if you, either way you don't need or you need cutlery, whichever is more positive. Well, PJ's yeah. asked the other day, I was there and they did ask about cutlery, but what? they still have plastic straws, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. 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 Have we ever um, collectively discussed that at our meeting? As part of the, I think as part of the, what was it? Wasn't poly, it could have been the polystyrene band because a lot of those forks and things are made out of um, polystyrene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think also during the pandemic, I thought that places weren't um, putting cutlery in. Well, I've never had any public food during the pandemic, so I don't know. But it is good to hear about PJs. At least, at least the person that served you that day asked you. That's one. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I'm just floating that in my mind. Thank could, you. Um, put that in the survey. You know. Yeah. Part of it. So important. Yeah. Thank um, you. I'm sorry, I have to go, and I'm. I'm glad at least I was here. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Jaya. Take care. Thank you all. Thank you. Take good care. Uh, compost summer outreach. Um, I asked Mike if there was going to be any promotion. I haven't heard back yet. So I hope that they will try and promote it using the LED sign. I see people using it you know, all the time. Every time I've gone there, it's practically full. So I think it's, yeah. it's definitely getting used. <clears throat> We have the, under 11, we have the, um, we heard from Carol already, the commercial water bottle ban outreach plan, decal maps and apps, Christine and Gary. Yeah, so I dropped the ball for a while and um, our last meeting, uh, we decided um, to go to a Cape Cod uh, tap, is that right? Well, well <laughs> So I think Chris is going to work on that when she has a chance. Mm -hmm. And we're still somewhat at a standstill about an app. Mm -hmm. um, is there, do you have any update, Carrie, about? Yeah, I'm meeting, uh, actually, I'm meeting with Madhavi tonight, and she'll have samples with her of the uh, that new device from uh, Tap App um, with a QR sticker uh -huh. that we could use to uh, as a possibility. So we're going to take a look at that tonight together. Okay. And I'll, get you, is, I'll send you samples as soon as I can get them out to you, Christine. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really understand what it was, so I'm eager to see yeah. what it is. That's great. Okay. So, Christine, is that is the only change, just changing from Wellfleet to Cape Cod? I think it, at this point it oh. is, yes, yeah. because we really haven't uh, figured out yet <laughs> <laughs> what we're gonna what we're gonna do in terms of locating, you know, a link or whatever. Yeah, and did you want me to look for pricing for for creating the, the decals? So I guess that's a question on timing. We're thinking that maybe initially we could um, just do some either cardboard or something or stiff card stock mm -hmm. just to have samples um, mm -hmm. that we can, because um, we don't know when we're gonna be able to start doing any promotion. I mean, just due to people's summer schedules. I mean, it does go into effect in September, but um, probably it's really gonna be for next year that we're working more with businesses on, um, mm -hmm. on providing mm -hmm. uh, services. Um, so we hadn't really made a decision on printing yet because we don't have any money <laughs> or access to it much. <laughs> um, but maybe we could just uh, print out some samples, find a color printer somewhere and, mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think? Or I guess just on plain paper too. Yeah, I think it, you could probably just print them at home at that point. Right. Yeah, that's if what it, I mean. Just, yeah. If it's just a sample, yeah. Right. Okay. And get some heavier stock paper or something. And so- I have a, I have a question. Um, when you say we have no money, do we really have no money or it's just that the access, the mess at town hall, we can't access the money? The latter, we do okay. have money, yeah. yeah. We might um, ask the DPW too because they have money. I was going to do that um, right right when Mark passed away, so I was going to wait a couple of weeks, and then I've been gone. So I'll get in touch with um, with Jean mm -hmm. at DPW because uh, it is most likely in their pot mm -hmm. our funds. So it's just a matter of maybe yeah. I can sort it out with her. 
So I don't think it's going to be very expensive. Um, if you print it yourself and put it in the window, the condensation will bleed, make a, a paper just. Yeah, I didn't mean to actually distribute or put anywhere. Uh -huh. Just, just as a sample. Show, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. And around how big did you want them? The Whatever you had recommended. What was that? Was it four to six? Yeah. Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll defer to your judgment as what a good size is. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Yep. And then the other thing is that I was um, going to start before I was out of town was to uh, Lydia had recommended Canva and just kind of just get all of the images and information that we wanted to convey to businesses in one spot so then we can start figuring out how to present it <laughs> um, in terms of a kind of a flyer or whatever it is we're going to do. So that's really, I mean, ha that, that's the main thing that we want to try to get out. You know, I don't know if it's going to be this month or not, but and, and you know, uh, Lydia, if we have access to email addresses for businesses, I mean, I guess we can do that ourselves if there isn't a time. I think through the chamber, probably through the oh, chamber. The chamber we right. could do a, a okay. email blast, thirty-five dollars. Right, that's the um, way to do it. That's probably good. Yeah, the best way. And yeah. also, you know, Hillary's willing to send things out on our behalf as well. Maybe okay. she will do that. Um, the health agent. Mm -hmm. And. And what about the maps, like the putting the map in the Google map? So that's something that's on my plate. I have addresses from a few towns. Um, and so I can, I will start, start populating that this month. That sounds great. Uh, next is water bottle refill stations. So I haven't. Uh, so that's, I, I guess. Uh, the main thing is, you know, we need access to the gift fund. Um, mm -hmm. to proceed with Main Street. And I've been trying to get in touch with the um, water commissioner who had offered, you know, two years ago to, <laughs> to do the installation for just the cost of materials. I haven't been able to get through to him. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and at the, at the um, as far as I know, nothing's gone. They have not installed the unit they have in the garage at the marina yet. And I pinged um, Will before, well, early in June, and it hadn't gone up in June, early okay. June. So I will ping him again and find out uh, when they can get that up. That's good. <laughs> get one thing done. <laughs> uh, social media posts and website, Chris? Uh, I haven't done a whole lot this month. I'm sorry, this has been a really busy month with family things and work. Mm -hmm. um, but if anyone has any suggestions for things that should be posted, let me know. I'm happy to do it. Okay. Community Cutlery Library of Things, though, well, we kind of covered that. I don't think there's any other news there. And, and is that going right now? Is like you said someone had just requested something, but is that mm -hmm. up and running? Well, the library's open limited uh, for limited browsing and mm -hmm. we haven't gotten any other requests, but you know, if they're willing to have people come pick it up, we can advertise it. Yeah, because yeah, I, yeah, I, I have a picture that I can use for that. I've just been sort of holding off on it. Yeah. Sure. What do you think, Christine? Well, I think we have to talk with the library because when I brought all the stuff that was in my basement um, last year, um, Naomi like found a place for it, but things are not really set up so that we can find things. And also the library of things where we would sort of barcode everything and it would all be checked out by the library mm -hmm. and handled by them um, with some assistance from us if needed uh, has been put aside during the pandemic. And Meg was the person who retired, I mean Peg, oh, yeah. who retired um, was championing in that. So, you know, I don't really know where things are, but I'll reach out to um, to Naomi and see, you know, if it's something that we can start, you know, getting things organized and, and get the mm -hmm. learning program going. Great. And then I'll let you know. Um, committee vacancies after June 30. So we have one member and two alternate positions available. 
And next we go to the minutes, Nancy's excellent minutes, and uh, she shared them through Google Doc. And I think Christine had some edits. Yeah, I just, I hope they got into the Google Doc. I mean, I followed your link, Nancy, and just made a couple of corrections. Okay. They did the last time. I'll double check. I just okay. saw that. I just did it be 20 minutes before the meeting. Sorry yeah. for the delay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll contact you if I don't see them. Okay, but. sounds good. <laughs> so we'll wait to approve those till next time, or what do you want to do? Um, can we, maybe we can get them on the screen, or what, what Christine, let, what were yeah, they? Let me, let me just um, go to uh, Nancy's email real quick and see if I can pull it up, and then we can look at well, it's nice to hear the birds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm staying at a place in uh, East Orleans that has it's like four acres of wetlands and vernal pools, and there's <laughs> so many birds. It's awesome. Okay, so let me just share my screen. have an extension for it anyway. Oh, gosh. I've got um, two of them, but they don't reach all the way down to the water. <laughs> can you see um, it? I have can, you, can you see that? Yep. I, I, first place that I, I mean, I do have memories of um, a big red board. Hey, Jane, can you mute your uh, I just microphone? Muted um, anyway, so uh, here it is. The um, has anybody looked through it or? Yep, I did. They look good to me. Okay. Has has anybody else looked at them? I did, but my vote doesn't count. That's right. On the chain now. Yeah. So uh, two of us have reviewed them, and um, if anybody. I mean, I reviewed what them. We, what we could I've, say. I've is, looked at them too, by the way. Okay, already. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Lydia, aye. Aye, Nancy. Nancy. Aye. If I can get back to my screen, I will. Let me stop sharing. There we go. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Very good. And uh, no accounting report to speak of. Um, Correspondence. I haven't been to the mailbox in a long, long time, but we don't usually get much mail. So, but I can, I'll look into that. And um, Nancy, I don't know if you, you know, at the town hall upstairs in the copy room, in the mail room, there's mm -hmm. a, a two drawer file cabinet, and all of the boards and committees have a file folder in there. And sometimes there's mail. Oh, okay. So I should go. Tell me again where. I, I can I, I can show you where it is, Nancy. The first time we can walk up there and. Oh, okay. 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 The it's, it's, it's a little confusing, and also recreation department is right next to us, so the, things get mixed up. Between us. Okay. And <laughs> I don't uh, print the minutes. I just um, send them as I did the last time. Right. Uh, so they get posted on the town yeah. website. You just make okay. a PDF and, and they'll post them. Yep. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Any future okay. agenda items? I guess um, the Bourne issue is one, but you know a lot of these will remain on the agenda. But are there, is there anything new people want to bring up? OK, so I think our next meeting is August 3rd. And um, I think we can, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? I motion to okay. I think there's consensus. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, have a wonderful um, July. We'll see you on the 11th at the road okay. race. And um, do we know when we're supposed to show up on the 11th? Yeah, I think I sent it out. The, okay. yep, it. There's the flyer says the the adult race is at uh, I believe I don't know. I have to look at it. Hold okay. On. We'll get you all those details. Already. And uh, let us know once you talk to Becky um, how we should proceed. Yeah. And also with, if she needs volunteers, because she always has the camp counselors too. So mm -hmm. um, maybe we should check with her or did you talk to her about that? I'll check with her and see how many she'd like. 
Okay. That sounds good. Nice to see everybody. You too. Great to see you all. Christine, I'll talk to you soon. All righty. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.